Hey guys, in this episode we're going to be implementing k-means clustering in Python. For that I've created a new Jupyter notebook and titled it k-means clustering example. If you guys are interested in how to use Python notebooks, I'd recommend checking out the start of episode 4.3 of this series. So the first thing we need to do is to import our libraries and data into Python. The libraries that I've imported are pandas, which will be used for importing our data, matplot library and seaborn for any data visualizations, and numpy for any mathematical operations on arrays. So I've saved the data that we're going to be working with under the folder project data and called it iris data. Just as a side note, all of the data and code used in this episode will be provided in a link in the description. Let's now take a look at our data. So here we have 150 observations of flower data and we've recorded the sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width of three different species of flowers. So let's now import this data into our notebook. So we'll store the data under the variable name iris data. And then we'll do pd.read csv and then we need to find the file path of our csv file so i've stored it under the file project data and then we add the file name which is irisdata.csv we'll then display the first few rows of the data by doing iris underscore data dot head and if we run this we can see the top section of our data so looking at this data here, I'm quite interested to see what species of flowers we're working with. And for that, we can do iris underscore data dot species dot unique. And if we run this now, we can see here that we're working with three different flower types, iris satosa, iris versicolor and iris virginica. I'm not sure if I butchered those pronunciations, but anyways. So I'm quite interested to find out if there are any patterns between our species petal width and sepal length. For that, I'm going to create a scatter plot and I'm going to use the Seaborn library to do so. So I'm going to do sns.scatterplot. Then we need to define our data. So we do data equals, and we sort it under the variable iris data. Our x value is the sepal length. We'll do x equals sepal length. I'm just going to copy and paste this here. And our y will be our petal width. And then we'll set our hue to equal iris data dot species and i'm going to set our palette to be cool warm underscore r so if we run this we've created a scatter plot and we've identified all of our points according to their species which is what this hue property does here and this palette equals cool warm underscore r essentially just gives the color scheme of our scatter plot so to implement our k-means clustering algorithm i've imported the k-means function from the scikit-learn library in this case i just want to apply our algorithm to data points relating to petal width and sepal length. So I'm just going to extract these columns from our iris data set and we'll store these columns under the variable x. So we'll set x equal to iris underscore data and then our sepal length and petal width. So let's now create an instance of our k-means function and set some parameters. We'll do km equals k-means. We'll set the number of clusters equal to 3. The number of initializations also equal to 3. We'll set the initialization method equal to random and the random state equal to 42. So here we chose three clusters since we know that we're working with three different species. We set the number of centroid initializations to be 3 and we set the initialization method to be random. So I believe by default it uses k-means++ plus plus initialization, but in this case we're going to be using random, and we set the random state equals to 42 to ensure that we get the same random initializations each time we run the cell to make sure that we get consistent results. So we'll now apply this algorithm to our data by doing km.fit, capital X, and let's now get a set of predictions for which cluster each data point belongs to, and we'll sort these predictions under the variable y underscore k-means. Set that equal to km.predict, capital X. And let's display these predicted values on our notebook. So if we run this cell here, we can see all of our predicted clusters for each of our data points. So to plot our clusters produced by our k-means clustering algorithm, I'm just going to copy and paste the scatter plot that we did before. And I'm going to change the hue to be y underscore k-means, which are these values here. So essentially, all of our data points are going to be colored according to which cluster they belong to. So if we run this code here, we can see here the three clusters produced by our algorithm. So let's now plot the centers of each of our clusters 
These will be the position of our centroids after we have completed our k-means clustering algorithm. So we'll store the position of these centroids under the variable name centers. We set that equal to km dot cluster underscore centers. So we can plot the centers on our scatter graph by using the following code. So here we're getting all of the x values for our centers and then all of the y values and plotting each one individually. We're setting the color of the centers to be black, the size to be 200, and the transparency to be 0 0.6. So if we run this code now, we can see here the centers or final centroids of each of our clusters. So I'm just going to take a note of which cluster most likely belongs to which species by setting our cell here to be of type markdown. And then we'll say that zero, which is this middle cluster here, most likely refers to this species here, which is iris versicolor. I'll just copy and paste this. And we'll do the same for the other clusters, like so. So before we go on to using these clusters to make some predictions, we're just going to quickly evaluate our algorithm by looking at the inertia or objective function value, which we discussed in the previous episode. So for that, we can do km.inertia. And if we run this here, we see the overall inertia is about 32.768. So we would expect this value to decrease as we have more centroids or more clusters. So let's say one day we went onto a field and we found an iris and we weren't sure as to what type of iris it was. So we can use our k-means clustering algorithm to help us determine this. So let's say, for example, we recorded that it had a sepal length of 4.7 centimeters and a petal width of about 0.8 centimeters. So we can use our algorithm to predict which iris species this observation most likely belongs to. So we'll do y underscore predict equals km dot predict and then new data. And then we'll display this onto our notebook. So if you run this cell here, we see here we get a value of one, which we noted here is most likely Iris Satosa. So in this example here, we were given that there were exactly three species in our data set. So it seemed appropriate to us to use three clusters. So sometimes we may not be given how many species or groups exist within this data. So how can we determine how many groups or clusters should we put this data into? So for that, we can look at something called the elbow method. So what the elbow method essentially does is it calculates the inertia for different numbers of clusters. In this case, we're going from one cluster all the way to 14 clusters. We're then setting our k-means algorithm to have k clusters and then fitting our algorithm to our data. And lastly, taking a note of the inertia. We'll then make a plot of our inertia against number of clusters k. So if we run this here, we see here that we're given the following plot. So the optimum number of clusters k is given by the elbow of the plot. So in this case, it seems as though it'll be around three. So this point can also be identified as a point before the inertia starts to decrease roughly linearly. So for the data here, three clusters will be most suitable, which helpfully matches our number of species. So this concludes our work with k-means clustering. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching.